Hey everybody, welcome to Stoveside Chats. My name is Chad Blackwilder with the North Carolina Department of Agriculture. On this episode, we're gonna be talking about state fair food. And later this month for the state fair, Got to BNC is taking over the Dorton Arena. So make sure you check out the website for all the details. Come by and see us. Okay, so we're gonna start out with uh, my version of fried cheese, um, like you get at the state fair. Most fried foods at the state fair have kind of a heavy pancake sort of batter on them. Um, which is good for doing that kind of high volume. I like a different breading. Um, and this is the standard three-step breading method where you're taking dry, wet, and dry. And we talked about this when Heidi and I did those BLT videos and she was doing the fry green tomatoes. And the idea is most of the time your product's gonna be wet. So you wanna dry it with the flour. And then the egg has the flour to stick to. And then the breadcrumb has the egg to stick to. So I'm using two different kinds of cheeses. Um, this is uh, from Chapel Hill Creamery. It's the Carolina Moon. It's their version of a brie. It's a washed rind cheese, cow's milk cheese, really good. And then Kevin was like, you should really go for this roasted red pepper cheese. Can't wait to try that. I've had the regular and I think the fig and honey, yeah. but this is gonna be really good. I'm gonna skewer these like you get at the state fair because food on the stick is delicious. Okay. So I've got my oil on low back here. Use a thermometer when you're doing this. You want to make sure you're at 350, 360 max. And then we're going to bread this. So we're going to take it through the flour to dry it off. And then in the egg wash. And the crumbs here, this is actually a, a cereal. It's a cinnamon cereal. Um, I think one of the things about fair food that is kind of, kind of whimsical, kind of odd. So we're going to use cereal for this. You could use... I mean, crushed up potato chips, panko breadcrumbs, you know, all, all kinds of stuff. So you want to make sure it's fully coated to create that crust to keep the cheese encapsulated as it's frying. All right, so we'll do this Carolina Moon next. Like that. Oh, that looks awesome. Yeah, that's beautiful cheese. All right, we'll do the same thing. So after I get this breaded, it's a good idea to let these set up in the cooler for, I don't know, at least 10 minutes to kind of get them chilled back. So that'll give us a more of a fighting chance when it goes into that hot oil. And then into the crumbs, fully coated. Okay, so we've got the cheese in the fridge and it's solidifying right now. Again, about 10, 15 minutes in the refrigerator. Um, it also gives the cheese a chance to harden up and, uh, and the crust will come together, the combination of the flour, the eggs, and whatever final crust you decide to put on there will really start to bind and create kind of a, a crust and a glue before it goes into the fryer. So while that's happening, Kevin, get us started on your dish. Sweet, awesome. So we're gonna do our version of the State Fair's Krispy Kreme Burger. Uh, I went ahead and got some donuts from our buddy Tepui. He's local in Raleigh. He sells at Idle Hour mainly, but you could find him throughout the Triangle at uh, you know, different coffee shops as well. So we got his glazed donut. Uh, we have some bacon already cooked off, and then we went ahead and got some local cheese from Chapel Hill Creamery. So they're farmer's cheese that I believe they only sell here at this That's farmer's correct. market. Right? Yeah. They don't sell yeah. anywhere else. But then we got some chili peppers, uh, some Fresnos, and some sweet. What we're gonna do is we're gonna dice these up and throw them into our cheese. So I'm taking these and I'm just quartering it like this, keeping it on the, the bell. And this makes it easier for when you're cutting to just go ahead and run your knife through it. And you could chop this as fine or as you know coarse as you would like. We're just gonna do a little semi-fine coarse. We'll do some of the Fresno, and then we'll take some of the sweet, just again to give it a little bit more flavor. And with these, what I like to do is I like to cut around the stem to avoid all the seeds. And again, cut that in half, cut as thick or as thin as you would like, move that to the side. And these Fresnos are, I'd say kind of medium spice. Yeah, they're about medium spice, not too much. And I just think it's gonna go really well with the farmer's cheese, a little bit of sweet pepper, adding some freshness to the whole dish. We're basically, I'm trying to get the sweetness to balance out with the saltiness to 
bounce out with a little bit of the heat. So we have the bacon for the saltiness. We have the uh, Fresno and the sweet chilies to give it the freshness and a little bit of heat. Yeah. And then we're gonna finish it off with a sweet, uh, sorry, with a green tomato from Ronnie Moore's farm, just to give it a little bit of a snap, a little bit of a crunch, and a little bit of that sour tartness. Yeah. So we're trying to kind of hit everything together in something that's, like you know, it. we normally just think of as that thing we walk past at the farmer's market. And yeah, and it's definitely a chef thing when, when cooking, like to think about those points that Kevin was just talking about, the acidity, the sweet, the salty, the bitterness. And that's one thing that um, I think the American palate is getting used to is kind of having those bitter notes in food, which I think is super important. Yeah, and not just, you know, like the, the tangy sometimes too, where yeah. it's adding fruit into dishes that you normally wouldn't think of having it. Exactly. Um, I think that's always something that's interesting and, and fun to mess around with. You know, I always tell my cooks to think of cooking like they would if they were in a band trying to write a song. That's you know, a great point. There's, there's four chords that everybody plays, but yep. you could find a thousand ways to make them sound different and make them your own. So, you know, figure out what you like, figure out what flavor profiles you enjoy, and then you're good to go. So I like this approach. No. You can really get in there with your hands and just probably the yep. quickest, easiest way. And that's what I was going to say. I mean, we could use goat cheese as well or any soft cheese will really do. But really what, all we want to do is just create a little mash. You don't have to get fancy with it. Just keep incorporating it back into it. If you have anything left on the cutting board, literally just use that same cheese to dab it, up. Dab it right back up. Cool. And you just need a little bit of a wad. You'll probably get two portions out of this. It almost looks like a pimento cheese patty. I was just thinking that, yeah. Oh, uh, but... Kind of a fresh, a fresh take. Yep, and, and super simple. Yeah. One cheese, it's like all. You could season it. You could add spices to it. Herbs, you could do herbs. Stuff, yeah. yeah, anything you'd like to it. So we're using um, some grass-fed beef today from Tengen Farms. Tengen Farms is in Creedmoor, about a half hour north of Durham. And Robert's a great guy. He's a Got to Be NC member. Um, beautiful property. Has 200 acres up there. Um, some really, really nice cattle. So you guys make sure you check out his website, Tengen Farms. Um, he's got all cuts available, and this ground beef looks really nice. Yeah. So it has nice marbling. It's going to be perfect for these burgers. Yep. So, and especially when you get something that's this high quality and local, you don't really want to cover it up with too many spices or add too much to it. We've already got a lot going on with the local cheese with all the other flavor profiles. Yeah. So this is one of those things where you want to let the protein kind of speak for itself. So I agree. We're really just going to throw this in the bowl here. But uh, sweet, so we got our patty there. We're just mixing it up a little bit of salt and pepper. And what we usually do at the restaurant, we'll just put it in our hand and just throw it back and forth. What this does is it gets the meat kind of sticking together a little bit more as opposed to when you roll it. You can't really get the, the meat compact. So as you can see, yeah, exactly. you start seeing it compact. It almost like those proteins start to bind mm -hmm. just in this, you know, before it even starts to cook. And then we got our patty there. So, and then, you know, a lot like, like, bread dough and glutens you know you can overwork your ground beef too and it oh, can be super tough 100 percent. so we're gonna do about a little four ounce patty you got now tell us about your buddy's uh donuts so uh alejandro is his name alejandro contreras uh, he's originally from venezuela he spent some time in argentina working through some you know top 100 kitchens in their uh pastry program and i actually met him because i was uh, opening up a restaurant he was going to come cook for me as my sous chef and he'd always mention donuts and kind of like last minute he decided he's going to follow what he wanted to do and start doing donuts. So uh, Sean from Mandolin, he's mm -hmm. working over there and also at the Idle Hour. They're kind of, that's what basically his commissary. Okay, he yeah. sells at Idle Hour and then he makes them at uh, Mandolin. That's awesome. Uh, so they're local right down the street from us on Glenwood Avenue uh, off St. Mary's. And yeah, I mean, he made these fresh for us. I picked them up maybe an hour yeah. before coming over here and uh, he's got hundreds of flavors going through everything so i mean cool. he's done nutella poppy seed a bunch of stuff i had to go check him out yeah some donuts yeah, he's awesome but so i'm seasoning up these patties now again you could do what we're doing with our cheeses and put them back into the fridge to let them tighten up a little bit that just makes them a little easier to handle uh, but it's not necessary especially if you're hungry so salt and pepper both sides and again don't go so aggressive with the salt you've already seasoned the inside so there's no need still waiting for this to get nice and hot and again we're not going to be looking for a, a temperature on these what i'm going to do is i'm just going to throw them down and probably leave them 70 percent of the way on one side just to get a super shard sear once we flip them i'm going to throw the cheese in between the two patties 
we'll keep the donut nice and soft. We're not gonna touch that. Yeah. And again, we're just gonna finish it off with a little bit of bacon and, and the green tomato, fresh, a little salt on, the, on that. It's gonna be great. Yeah. Did you want a little bit of oil in your pan? Yeah, please. We're about ready there. Oh yeah. That's what you wanna hear right there. Yep. If you don't hear a sizzle when you throw your food down on saute, it's a, it's a sad piece it of is. meat or vegetable that's cooking right it's now. It's gonna be a gray, sad day. It's gonna be like a rainy Monday morning. Yep. So again, I'm just putting weight on the burger, really just trying to get a little bit of fat rendered off of it, as well as getting as much of the meat cooking as possible. And you know, I know you, like a lot of people say, don't press on your burgers, but I think when you're on this first side, you can press and you're not gonna press the juices out. Once you flip it over, yep. you really don't wanna press it that much. That's, a, that's the last little bit. This also kind of helps keep them from cupping. A good technique is right. also putting your thumb right in the middle before you throw it down. Yeah. And that helps the burger stay nice and flat. I know sometimes when you're cooking at home, you make a patty and you wonder, why is this just a ball now? Yeah. I, I turned back into a ball. One thing I like to do as well is, you saw I had them kind of left to right. I'll move them north to south to get fresh heat. You know, when you put something cold in the pan, it draws the heat away from it. That's so I kept point. it there and then moved it to another side to just get fresh heat back on yeah. it from that pan. Whenever you're flipping a burger, nice thing to know, I always tilt the pan towards myself to bring the oil here so that when I flip, I'm not flipping onto oil. Yeah. I'm just flipping over. And you're flipping away from it. Yep, exactly. We're gonna take this cheese. Oh my God. We're gonna throw it right on top. Wow. We're gonna keep the burger still cooking separately. I'm throwing it in there early to just help it melt. Yeah. We're gonna finish melting it with the burger being right on top. We got our resting rack over here. Yes, sir. Which we'll use shortly. So here's uh, another thing that's really important whenever you're cooking meat, um, is to have a place to let it rest. Like even a burger should rest before you really bite into it because as a piece of meat is cooking, the heat is heating up all the juices on the inside and they're running around like crazy. So if you take that steak and cut it while all those juices are still running around, all those juices are gonna be on your cutting board and not in the burger or the, or the piece of meat. And have something to rest it on because when you put it right down on something, it keeps cooking. Then you've got that big puddle of juice that should be in the meat also. So make sure you can set it where air can get around it. Yep. Very, very important. Yeah, everything cooks till it's cold. Yeah, so. that's exactly right. Yeah. Oh boy. Man. And then what I like to do, since I've already pre-cooked my bacon, if you ever have just bacon laying around the house, we're just gonna go take that and use that nice fat we rendered off from the meat and just reheat our bacon in it really oh, lightly. Man. That's a great idea. So. Cause yeah, you can, you can rejuvenate bacon and bring it, bring it back just, to life. And even if it's just to warm it up, it's way better than throwing it in your microwave to try and heat it up. And you have this delicious, like I said, local beef. There's no reason we should waste that delicious fat. And again, super lightly, it's already cooked. We really just want to warm it through. All right, so we're going to finish up this burger. Let's see yep. what you got. Sweet. So we got the burger resting. We let it hang out there for two, three minutes. We're going to finish it off with uh, a little bit of smoked Malden. You know, I was making the joke as a chef, I had to bring some fancy salt to oh, yeah. finish it up with. I mean, nothing says state fair like French sea salt. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to take our donut and just cut it right down the middle. And this is kind of an optional thing. You could do any aioli you would like, mayonnaise, dukes, whatever. There's actually some Duke's mayo we have at the restaurant that we mix with fresh chipotles. So again, we're kind of trying to mix in that spicy, sweet, uh, savory combo Getting for the donut. Notes. Yeah, well, I'm only gonna put it on one side. I don't want it to be too overwhelming. I just want to add a little bit of a different flavor profile to it. Gotcha. So we'll throw our burger right on top. Oh boy, that looks so good. A Couple pieces of bacon here. And then this is some spicy cress just to add a nice little crunch to our burger. Yeah. From Ronnie Moore. Do you want to do the, the uh, oh, yeah. tomato? Oh, yeah. I got you right yes, here. Yes, sir. Thank you. You want these thin Beautiful. or Beautiful. Thin. I like, I like what you said in that last video about yeah. keeping them thin so they don't slide out. Yeah. Beautiful. Need one more. There you go. Nice and thin. God, all that smells so good. This is gonna keep the burger nice and put together. The crust, bacon, donut. Fancy it up since we're Not here. Not right there. there. Fanciest uh, Krispy Kreme burger you've seen. Kevin finished up his burger, it looks fantastic. Can't wait to try that, man. All 
All right, so the cheese has come out of the refrigerator. It's been there for about 15 minutes. It's firmed up. This has started to kind of create a bit of a crust. I've checked my temperature on the oil. It's right at 350. So here we go. Man, you can smell the, uh, the, the cinnamon cereal cooking. So you don't really need to cook this to where it's going to melt all the way through. Again, like Kevin said, this is going to continue to cook as it cools. So we really just want to make sure we have a nice crust on there. And whenever you're doing this at home, again, be really careful. Don't overfill your pot with oil. You can see it's kind of bubbling up there, but it's not coming over the edge. So I'm going to leave that guy right there. And then we're going to do our Carolina Moon. And I'm kind of using this little basket here to support the bottom. These are softer cheeses, so if you pull them out by the skewer, you might just get the skewer and the cheese is going to stay in there. So, And I'm going to serve this with, I got some fig jam from Walker Farms, but like you could use any kind of fresh fruit, cook it down with a little bit of sugar, some jalapenos. Yeah. The idea is to have kind of a sweet, spicy, tart dipping sauce. Cheeses are, are naturally salty, so they like sweeter things. And again, we don't want to over fry these. Those are super good. So we've got the, the cereal, the cereal crust on there, which is kind of funny. I'm going to add a little more of this uh, watercress. We got this from Ronnie Moore Farms. Watercress is really, really peppery, like arugula. Um, great flavor to it. So. Plate these up. We'll add some of our, our fig jam to the mix. You could thin this out with a little bit of water if you wanted to, or some cider vinegar to make it a little more tart. Um, but I'm going to leave it like that, I think. Put that right there. And we'll get some of this purple basil that we got from Ronnie Moore as well. I think that's it. What do you think? That looks awesome. Okay, so we've got our two fair dishes here. Kevin did his take on the Krispy Kreme uh, cheeseburger. And I did my version of fried cheese. Um, you guys have fun with this. The idea was to kind of be inspired by fair food, go to the farmer's market, get some fresh ingredients. And like you were talking about earlier, being able to add fresh produce into what's typically food that's not great for you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it helps a little bit. Yeah. And I think like, like a cool part of the farmer's market as well is being able to not only shop, but come with friends and other people and you kind of bounce ideas off each other and, you know. Yeah. You start tasting things or doing things you normally wouldn't do with the produce that's around here all the time. That's, that's exactly right. Awesome. Yeah. So think outside the box. You guys, make sure you, uh, during the state fair, Got to BNC is taking over Dorton Arena, so come check us out. Go to the website for all the details. We look forward to seeing you there. Kevin, thank you. Awesome. Thank you, boss. I Go to the it. Rockford and Raleigh on Glenwood. Check out Chef Kevin Ruiz. Thank you. Thank you, man. I appreciate it.